everyone i hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day in this video we are going to learn about some basic things related to remote code execution vulnerability which is considered as one of the most critical vulnerabilities that you can find in a web application so before going to this video if you haven't checked out my previous video in which i've shown you that how we can use python to find broken links that can use to hijack that broken links and that will ultimately get, a, get us some bounties then go ahead and check it out the link is given in the description as well as you can see it on the right side of the screen and now with that being said let's get started so let's talk about the very basic thing first that what is remote code execution actually right so we can say that remote code execution is a web application vulnerability or a vulnerability that allows an attacker to execute arbitrary commands on a web application or on the web application server to be more specific, right? So basically, if you are able to execute commands on the remote server or the server on which the web application is hosted, then you have found a remote code execution vulnerability, right? Why it is critical? Because as you can see that since we are able to execute commands on the server, we can access almost everything. We can do almost everything, right? So we can destroy the server. We can take backups. We can add more backdoors. We can do some privilege escalation to get the root access and so many interesting things, right? So this is the why this uh, vulnerability is considered as critical vulnerability, right? Now, what is the cause of remote code execution? If we talk about that, so see, uh, first, uh, let me uh, ask you guys a question, right? So tell me, what do you think is the most common cause of, uh, you know, uh, vulnerability, right? So why vulnerabilities appear in a web application? If you think about that, then you'll come to notice that most of the vulnerabilities are happening because the developers are trusting the user's input too much, right? Now, say that there is an application that is actually taking the a user input and executing commands right now since the application is using user input to execute command so the user has now the control on that particular web application now maybe there are some uh, you know security uh, protection that that may be in place that can be used to prevent remote code execution but still there is a high possibility that remote code execution can uh, happen because of the only thing that it is actually the functionality, the power is given to the user to execute commands, right? Let's try to understand it in more depth. For example, I have created one uh, application right over here in Python, this particular file rc.py. And now let us try to see that how, if you are uh, trusting user input too much can cause you a uh, huge damage in your server. So let's try to run this file first. So Python 3 rc.py. Now, as you can see, we are only allowed to execute two commands over here, who am I and ls, right? Let's try to execute who am I first. As you can see, the command has been executed without any issues. And let's try to execute ls, right? And as you can see, same way, the command has been executed without any errors. And now, Let's try to execute some other commands. So suppose that I'm a attacker and I want to execute some other command and I want to access the current directory of this particular file. So I can type this command pwd, right? But now as you can see, this application has blocked me, right? So it is showing that malicious command. So it is actually blocking me to execute some other commands apart from the white listed ones, right? Now let's try to see how we can bypass it if the application is having a poor security mechanism, right? Let's try to see the source code of it first. So now let us type cat rc.py to see all the contents of this particular file. And as you can see, this is the small code that is written in this particular file. Let's try to understand this code and let's try to, uh, from the logic of this code, let's try to come up with a payload that can be used to execute some other commands apart from the white listed ones, right? So first we are importing sub process. So it's obvious that it is used to execute system commands, right? Then we are printing an info, uh, a message basically that you can only execute two commands. So that's none of our interest as well. Then we are storing the user input in a variable, which is known as command in this particular uh, application. And now we're checking that if who am I is present in command variable, or if ls is present in command variable, only then we are going to call the subprocess.call method that will execute the command. 
otherwise we are going to print malicious command right so from the looking at for the very first time you may find that this application is uh, secure right but there is a small issue over here what is a small issue is this particular keyword this special keyword in right so this very small keyword is causing a remote code execution vulnerability in this application right let's try to understand how and let's try to see how we can fix it as well let me open a new tab let me go to the python console sorry go to the python console and now let's try to see that what is the meaning of in keyword in python right let's try to understand that what is the meaning of in keyword in python 3 so for example let's say i am storing my name in a variable and let me call the variable name as name right now i want to check that whether this name variable is containing a letter let's say i right in that case i can use a an in operator something like this so i can do i in name right now if i is present in name it is going to return true otherwise it is going to return false right so from the look of it you can see that in the name variable we have fayaz and fayaz have this character i right so obviously it is going to print I, uh, true right as you can see it has printed true now similarly if i type let's say b so if b is in name so b in name right so basically this character b is not present in this variable name right so again it's going to print false right so this is the working of uh in operator now you may be thinking that okay how we can use this particular uh, information to execute remote code uh, to execute rc right execute commands let's try to understand this so let me execute python 3 rc.py now if i type who am i and after who am i if i type anything let's say uh, be practical right now this command is going to be executed it's going to be uh, executed by this particular method why because you can see that this value this value is going to be stored in the command variable and who am i is actually present in the command similarly the i was presented in the variable name therefore it is going to call this particular line of code right let's try to execute it as you can see this time we are not getting the malicious command right instead what we are getting is we are getting that this command is not found right which means that we were able to bypass that particular uh, security mechanism now the question is that how we can execute the actual command as you can see over here this is not an actual command right this is not an actual command in linux and obviously this is not an actual command in any of the os currently in the market so to execute it specifically in linux we have a lot of things that we can do for example like let me just exit out of this python console and if i want to execute two commands let's say two commands at once we can use this particular and keyword right let's see a small demonstration like if i type who am i and with and if i type pwd then we can execute both of these commands at the same time let's see this as you can see that both of these commands are getting executed cyberghost as well as uh, the, the pwd command right so similarly we can use this payload to exploit this particular application let me just clear it out and let's type python3 remote code execution.py and now let's do the same thing that we are we have did over here is let's copy this control shift c control shift v right and now since this variable will contain who am i so it is going to be bypassable it is going to bypass the remote code execution protection lying in this particular application let's hit enter and as you can see we are successfully able to bypass this uh, application and we are able to execute the commands right so now we have achieved a remote code execution vulnerability from this particular application now think that if this particular line of logic or if this particular line of code was present in an actual web application then we will actually be able to execute these commands right with the same method that we did over here right so since this was the very first video i have stuck to the basics and later on we are going to learn more advanced technique about remote code execution and why it occurs and how we can prevent it 
So let's try to understand how we can prevent this uh, vulnerability in this particular code. So instead of, uh, let me just open it. No, rce.py. So instead of opening it, uh, sorry, instead of using this in operator right over here, you can do double equals to operator that strictly checks whether this who am I is present in the command or not. So if there's anything after who am I or before who am I or in between who am I, it's going to go under this else condition and it will print malicious command. Let's try to do this. And now if I try to use the same payload that we did, we'll see that it is getting blocked, right? So this is one of the way of blocking a remote code execution on an application. I hope that you've understood it. So we can also test this particular uh, payload on a live website. For example, let me just open my browser. Open a new tab and let's uh, visit a website that actually execute command on the server. For example, most of the online compilers are actually using uh, the user input to execute commands, right? So if I type Python 3 compiler online, for example, and let's go with this one, right? So as you can see, we are executing the command by the user on this particular server. So we can simply do import sub process and then we can do sub process dot call and we can execute commands who am I and shell equals to true, right? Since this application is executing the Python file, from the user input, then we can create our own Python program that can be used to execute the commands, right? If I type run now, so it has shown that this module is not available. No worries, we can do something instead of a uh, sub process, we can do something else. Let me show you. So we can import OS. Let me see whether OS is actually in the, in their module or not. So it's actually not there in the module. So let's go back. Let's try to hit a different compiler this time. Let's go with this one. Here it is. And let me just get rid of this. Let's import the process. Let me just click on run to see whether it is actually executing it or not. Yeah, it's executing it. And now let's call sub process dot call who am I shell equals to true. As you can see, the command was executed successfully, but uh, it was not able to find the name of the user ID, right? So let's try to execute ls instead of uh, who am I. And as you can see, there is only one file present in this directory. We can also execute some other commands, pwd. And as you can see, we are currently in the home directory, right? So this is how you can exploit or you can find remote code execution vulnerability on an application. I hope that you have understood the concept and the logic behind RCE. If you have any doubts, if you have any issues, feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section. And do join our Telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going into cybersecurity as well as web development. And now with that being said, keep learning and thanks for watching.